Okay guys, today's little project was finishing up the cylinder honing on the freshening of that 350 engine out of my blazer. Um, basically what I've done is I lubricate the cylinders with just a little bit of uh, ATF, automatic transmission fluid. A lot of people misunderstand how fast you need to move your hone to be able to get the hex marks in the right uh, 45 degree angle. So I'm going to do the finish hone on this side of the block and then give you an idea of how fast this thing actually moves. So check this out. So, as you can see, it's a definite workout on your arm to try to keep up not only your sustained RPM, but your actual tool speed to give you a chance to actually get the 45 degree hex marks you're looking for when you hone a cylinder. A lot of, another aspect that people forget about is that you want to hone your cylinder and reverse directions on your drill in between pat like in between your passes like let's say you do um, let's say you do all the cylinders 15 strokes or whatever because that all depends on how new your flex hone is because a brand new flex hone takes off material a lot faster than a used one or a broken in hone. So keep that in mind. When you go to hone a block, don't have a set amount of strokes in your mind because if you research it online, you'll see a lot of people say, oh, I uh, only do like seven. Only do like seven to 10 fast strokes and that's a good, you know. What they're talking about is glaze busting and more than likely, they're talking about a brand new flex home and all they're trying to do is just bust a glazed cylinder uh, when you're actually going to hone a cylinder to get a good uh, 45 degree hex so you can seat new rings more times than not you're going to have to do more than seven strokes i promise you but work the cylinder little by little don't just come in thinking i'm going to do this 10 i'm going to do this 20. work the cylinder until it gives you the 45 degree hex top to bottom that you're looking for you know what i mean don't shortchange yourself that that flex hone is not removing enough material that you're going to significantly hurt um, making the cylinder too big or something weird like that as long as you're lubricating it and switching between clockwise and counterclockwise for each pass, you're gonna get the most wear or the most uh, life out of your flex hone. You're gonna end up with a better finished hone on your cylinders. Let's see if I can move you guys over here and look a little bit. Cause I finished this side of the block and wiped them out with some of them lint free rags. And that is a really nice 45 degree uh, home job on this block. And the other side will be just as good once I get around to, sorry about that, bump the, bump the tripod. But once I get around to wiping those cylinders out, 
they'll look just as good as that side. But I just want you guys to see how fast you actually have to move your hone to get the 45 degree hex mark. get a couple of my box of rags or whatever because I've got these pretty much lint free Scott Scott no s bag uh, rags in a box but here's what I was going to show you just that little bit of honing let's move this crazy thing down here on the pig mat Ugh. but I want to show you when you do that home job You're literally just taking off dust. Now keep in mind, this is gonna have transmission fluid and cylinder dust. That's what you're looking at. It's just dust. You're not hurting your block or doing anything crazy. You're just trying to clean up these cylinders to give the ring its best possible, you know, if you talk to a machine in the shop, they talk about achieving a plateau finish. So they're basically looking for that 45 degree angle on the hone. Then they have tools that are called bore brushes. So imagine this, not too different from when you sharpen like a uh, knife. If you've ever sharpened a pocket knife, You'll, you'll create an edge that's so fine that it has little microscopic, just almost too small for your eyes to see, raised metal that's right on that uh, edge of the knife when you sharpen it. Well, when you're talking about honing a cylinder, you're going to have, see if I can use the right terminology, when you hone the cylinder, you're going to, after you scratch that surface up with your hone, you're going to have microscopic roughness or raised areas on the cylinder. So what a, a good machine shop will do, they'll use a hone, they'll hone the cylinders, then they'll go back and they'll hit those cylinders with, with what's called a bore brush and the, think of the bore brush as kind of like when you burnish something, like you uh, almost, I don't want to say polish it because that's the wrong word, but the bore brush will knock all those little microscopic or really tiny scratches down flat. So basically what you're doing is creating that quote unquote plateau finish where you get the honed texture you want without any abrasiveness like you're not going to have anything digging into your face of your ring while it's trying to seat um, nothing like that so basically what i found is when you use a flex hone and you alternate between clockwise and counterclockwise and you run it till you get the surface texture and the heck in the 45 degree hex because that's very important you run that tool and move it fast enough don't over rev it because that makes it even tougher. You've got to get in the groove where you can get it to a nice medium uh, RPM in the bore because the bore, as soon as you enter that bore, it's going to try to slow the drill down. So you got to learn to kind of play with your trigger, get to a good steady medium RPM. And I mean, move that tool in and out. And you know, you've got to do it fast enough so that when you look in that cylinder, you've got 45 degree hex, hex marks. If your hex marks are closer to horizontal, less than 45, you're not moving the tool fast enough and you're probably running too many RPMs. Because what'll happen is when that flex hone is in there and it's spinning its butt off and you're not moving it fast enough because you think in your mind that, oh, I'm doing a better hone job because I'm really hitting it good. That's not the way you do it and that can actually hurt damage your piston rings on startup and during break-in because when you don't have the 45 degree hex marks it puts a lot of scraping scratching tension and pressure and damage 
on the face of your piston rings. So, a lot of times when people try to hone a block, they don't achieve the 45 degree hex marks. They assemble the engine, they get it running, they think it's okay. Shortly down the road, it starts using oil. Starts using oil, starts oiling the plugs, starts acting crazy, and they're like, oh my God, you know, what do I do to this thing? Basically, because they didn't put the proper hex marks on their cylinder, it ended up glazing the cylinder, probably damaged the face of the rings as well, and it's basically blow-by. It's basically just pushing oil past those uh, glazed cylinders into your uh, chambers. So, uh, if you're gonna hone a block, it's not rocket science. You just gotta get a good medium speed, alternate your directions, you know, do, let's say, I'm just using this as an example, do 10 strokes, uh, reverse, you know, if you start out clockwise, do 10 strokes, boom, click it over to counterclockwise, hit it 10 more, wipe that cylinder out. What's it look like? Am I there? If, I, if I'm not there, you know, you might need to put a little bit more transmission fluid in there, boom, do it again, do five strokes clockwise, five strokes clock or counterclockwise, and then, you know, move back and forth, wipe the cylinder. What's it look like? It's just a process that you follow until you get the absolute surface texture you're looking for so that you can properly seat those piston rings. Now, for a normal rebuild, you, most people are gonna run uh, iron rings, ductile iron rings. If you're running a molly ring, or let's say a chrome-faced ring, chrome is very hard. They require a finer finish so keep in mind, if you're rebuilding a performance engine and you're gonna use a, a like a chrome-faced ring, you're gonna to need to get, gosh, I think it's either a 400 or 600 grit hone to properly set that thing up to seat those rings. Because that face is hard, they have a finer texture that allows it to wear into the cylinder, for lack of a better term. So when you run those hard faced rings, you have to actually get the bore smoother than you would on a normal re-ring job. So, you know, and when you see a cylinder that's been run, you know, if it doesn't have a ring groove in it, and you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't think that cylinder's round anymore. I think, dude, I'm telling you right now from experience, I have built tons of engines with blocks that we bought out of the back of somebody's pickup truck that's just been sitting out there that was already bored 60 over and run until they had a problem with a head gasket or something. We've cleaned those cylinders up and run those engines for, for years with no complaints. So don't ever think that you can't just clean up a cylinder and rebuild an engine to get it back in service. Because people have done that, I've done it. It's been done for you know decades, if not longer. You know, now when you're building high performance and you're looking for the absolute most horsepower, no blow by, no oil usage, best to start with fresh bore and a new set of pistons. Now you don't have to run new, but I'm just saying, if you're going for all out, you know, I'm, I'm the king of the hill engine build, that's when you want to make sure you get a good fresh bore, get a good cylinder, have them hone it, bore and hone it with a deck plate, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you guys probably already know about a lot of that stuff. Um, this engine ran good, but the rings, I never liked the way the rings seated. And we had a lot of problems getting the proper ring set for it to, to begin with because the factory pistons used a shallow oil receiving groove of 165,000. So I am going to fix it. It's going to be a really good engine. And I uh, can't wait to get it assembled and delivered over to Parrish so he can get it in his truck and start driving that thing to work. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope hopefully this video is a little bit informative on uh, how you hone a cylinder block and how to get those hex marks at the 45 degree angle. Thanks for watching.